Hello YouTube, welcome to episode 3 of Discussing Ting's Games. Today I'm going to be talking about, it's another game that's sort of like been on the peripherals of my life so far. You know, I was already a big fan of the franchise as it is, um, the movie franchise, and this was probably one of those games that revolutionised, and probably it's for some people, for, for a lot of people that were you know, alive in the late 90s and 2000s, um, it was probably the game that kind of started the craze of first-person shooter multiplayer modes. So it probably led to what we have nowadays, like Call of Duty and things like that. It, it, I believe it revolutionized um, the, the first-person shooter genre. You probably c can guess by now what it is that I'm talking about. It's uh, GoldenEye 007 on the Nintendo 64. Yeah, it was released in 1997, two years after the film GoldenEye came out. So I think it was touted to be something completely different to what it was originally, and they were going to release it for the the to coincide with the release of the movie. But I think they Rare, who who developed the game, they needed more time to to get it made, and that's how we we ended up with the game that we've got. So it is pretty much based on. Uh, with a few events changed here and there, it's pretty much based on um, the film, which incidentally is one of my favourite James Bond movies. Again, James Bond has been, the, the movies have been part of my life for a very long time. I remember watching Live and Let Die when I was like 10 or 11, and I was just mesmerised by this this suave, sophisticated kind of, nothing could rarely get one up on him. I think I actually played Goldeneye, the game, before I saw the film. And I think playing the game made me want to see the film. That's how I ended up getting involved with it. And when the Nintendo 64 fit first came out, I can't remember whether it was a game that came out with the, the N64, or whether it was shortly after the N64 came out, but it was a game that like everyone that had a Nintendo 64 had Goldeneye. They had Super Mario 64 and they had Goldeneye and they might have had like Pilot Wing 64 or something like that. So as I mentioned in my Conker's Bad Fur Day video a few months back, my brother was the what was the Nintendo person in the house, and um, he was the one that had the N64. Don't know how he got a copy of GoldenEye actually, um, but yeah, we had a copy of GoldenEye. The campaign in particular, I've I've always been someone that's I was uh, I've always been someone that's been more into the campaigns of first-person shooters than the multiplayer. Like if you. If you sat and watched me playing Call of Duty, I always just pe play the campaigns because I can't be asked with the false confidence that people online have where they feel like they can say anything they want to you because you're not in the room with them sort of thing. I remember playing Call of Duty Modern Warfare 1 online and that's probably the first and last last time I've ever played online where like some 12 year old American kid, it was the first time I'd ever played online before. And basically like, the guy was like berating me on on this on microphone, and I was thinking to myself, if this if if, if, if I saw this kid in the street, he wouldn't say anything, and that's that's why I stopped because I was just like, it's just full of kids that have got nothing better to do with their lives. So let me just stick to myself and do the single player. But anyway, the campaign for 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 Goldeneye was immense. It was amazing. Even today, when I was recording the footage for this and I was replaying it, I just remember how like addictive the game is. I could have sat there and completed it, but I only needed like a certain amount of footage to, to, re to record this, basically. But yeah, it's, it's amazing, particularly um, the two levels that I always remember are Facility and Cradle. I think it's called Cradle, the last level. Those were the two, the two levels that I really, really enjoyed the most. And then back in the day, you know, when you had friends over and stuff like that, or family over that played games as well the multiplayer was something that you would sit there for hours playing and I remember losing like you know a friend of mine used to call this I think he used it as as an example of playing Mortal Kombat until uh the middle of the night and then you 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 kind of you start at a certain time let's say eight o'clock in the evening UK time and then it's like 3 a.m the next day and you're like in a warp basically and that's what it was like playing GoldenEye on multiplayer the thing that was really cool about GoldenEye multiplayer as well, as a Bond fan, is that there was a lot of um, Bond villains and characters that you know and love, you know, like Odd Job and Baron Samadhi and Jaws and people like that. Yeah, it was it was a really, really, really good, good period of playing. And yeah, it's it's one. It's as I said at the beginning, it is probably one of the games that started 
what we know first person shooters to be today. They took that kind of model and have now made it tenfold. If you look at like the last Call of Duty Modern Warfare, for example, brilliant like the campaign in that is absolutely amazing um i think it's actually better than cold war cold war seems a little bit rough there are moments in call of duty black ops cold war that are pretty good but yeah modern warfare the the last one the 2019 one that's like or 2018 or 2019 one that is really good like really really good and you can see that from games like goldeneye that's where you you get the the inspiration, basically, all uh, to me anyway, all first-person shooters now come from that GoldenEye model. To some, it's considered the greatest first-person shooter of all time, um, and I'm finding it hard to, to disagree with that. I think the only game that comes close to it is probably either Time Splitters 2 or, which again, it plays quite similarly to GoldenEye, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. I think they're, they're, they're two first-person shooters that I've like played over and over and over again along with Goldeneye. So I'd probably say those two are close. But let me know in the comments what first-person shooters you think are better than Goldeneye or as good as Goldeneye. I'm pretty sure Counter-Strike will come up, which some people would argue is kind of the precursor for Goldeneye. But yeah, I think it's rated the N64's third most sold game, best-selling game, the third best-selling game of all time, which says a lot. Yeah, and I think even now, you know, you could buy it in a second-hand shop, like over here in the UK, it would be like CEX, Computer Exchange, I think is what the, what the, what that stands for. But yeah, you could buy it there for about like 15, 20 quid or something like that. And it, you know, there's still a lot of high demand for that for that game, especially now that there's a trend over retro stuff. As I mentioned earlier, it was developed by Rare, who at the time were, for me, probably one one of the best developers out there. You know, they'd made, post that time, well, they made Diddy Kong Racing, which was an early N64 release. They then produced one of my, probably my second favorite game of all time in Conker's Bad Fur Day. They, um, produced obviously GoldenEye, they produced Jet, so Jet Force Gemini, um, Banjo-Kazooie, which is also a really good game. So yeah, they, they were on a roll at the time. I think they were one of the best best developers out there in that kind of like late 90s, early to mid 2000s, um, until the Xbox came out and brought them and ruined it. <laughs> so yeah, I think they were producing some of the best games of the time. But yeah, you know, years later, under the Nintendo brand again, on the Nintendo Wii, there was a reimagining of GoldenEye 007 released, uh, as I said, on the Wii, which was kind of, it was a reimagining because they had Daniel Craig instead of Pierce Brosnan as as Bond, basically. I, I didn't play the Wii version, I played Reload, I've actually got Reloaded, 007, GoldenEye 007 Reloaded on the PS3. It wasn't that bad, I've never completed it, um, but it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. It was very kind of Daniel Craig era. They've definitely made it a Daniel Craig era bond. And that's the thing of Daniel Craig's, I think there's been four games, James Bond games under Daniel Craig's tenure as Bond. Quantum of Solace, Goldeneye, the remake, Bloodstone. There was one more, is there one more? No, actually, I think it might be three. If, well, if you include GoldenEye on the Wii, the original one on the Wii, and then the reloaded version. Oh, 007 Legends, that's it. Yeah, that like that's probably like, along with Bloodstone, they're probably the best of his tenure, I'd say. They haven't done a Bond game since, but yeah. Speaking of which, I'm looking forward to Io's, um, the Hitman guy's Bond game. Um, that should be interesting because Hitman and Hitman 2 on the next-gen consoles were, were really good, and obviously the old Hitman games are really good, so yeah, let's see what they do with an IP like Bond. Yeah, and I think, speaking of that, speaking of Bond games in general, I don't necessarily think that there has been an amazing, like, you know, almost a culture-changing game in the James Bond franchise since then, and I'd probably say the closest game to that would probably be, like, Everything or Nothing on the PS2. 
which some people say is the spiritual last film Bond appearance of Pierce Brosnan because he did the voice and everything as well as having his likeness and all that kind of stuff and it was the first Bond game that had like famous people in it and it felt almost like a Bond film. I thought it was a really good game but yeah I don't think there's anything pr prior to that that's been as good as Goldeneye. Um, and everything or nothing probably comes everything or nothing and maybe Nightfire come close but Goldeneye has been is probably considered the best James Bond game of all time I remember watching Triple Jump's ranking of all James Bond games and I knew before I'd even started I was like Goldeneye is going to be number one because everyone loves Goldeneye even people that don't like James Bond love Goldeneye <laughs> or don't think much of James Bond love Goldeneye a bit of a, a, another kind of funny fact or funny thing I found out about um, this game is that it's probably one of the first games I ever saw that had big head mode. I don't know why, but as like a, you know, 12, 13 year old kid, you find it funny seeing a blocked Pierce Brosnan head running around or a blocked Famke Janssen head running around with like, <laughs> with like massive head. For some reason, caricatures were really funny when I was younger. So yeah, that was quite interesting. But yeah, the final thing I'd probably say about this game is that it managed to do something that I don't think many first person shooters nowadays do like I think the Call of Duty games and the ba particularly the Battlefield games even though I don't mind the campaigns on them but the Battlefield games particularly they seem to focus more on multiplayer and I guess because it makes money it's like well we make money off of it so we may as well focus in on it you know like Call of Duty Black Ops uh, 4 I think it was was all multiplayer no campaign at all which was annoying and I think Goldeneye had that balance that I don't think first person shooters have anymore or, or since maybe PS3 there hasn't really been a first person shooter that has that balance anymore you've you've either got kind of the, the high focus on multiplayer in Call of Duty or Battlefield Call of Duty kind of does have a little bit of balance but still kind of like their main USP is is multiplayer and then you've you've got Battlefield that for me is completely multiplayer and then you've got Wolfenstein. Wolfenstein is still good but it, it's obviously a, a story heavy first person shooter so I think with Goldeneye, Goldeneye for me was the last one to kind of go yeah this is what we've got. We've got a very good story campaign mode that feels fun and energetic and things happen and then you've got the multiplayer mode that like you can spend hours you know until the next morning playing and experiencing the emotions of that so I think all in all it was um, a fantastic game and will live on in infamy as long as the N64s keep getting sold secondhand Goldeneye will sell <laughs> even if it is secondhand Goldeneye will sell and if you haven't played Goldeneye yet I suggest you go out and go and find someone that has an N64 or if you can spare the cash go and get an N64 on gold go and get Goldeneye you will not be disappointed or if you can't find Goldeneye, get its spiritual successor, which came out many years later, I think in the last cycle of the N64, which was Perfect Dark. I think it was in that period of last of Rare's last couple of games. And Perfect Dark is also really good as well. Like, it's, it's not Goldeneye, but it's still good. It's like, it was in that period where characters spoke and that kind of stuff they had voices and that kind of thing so it, it works really well and it's a very it's a unique story you can actually get that on rare replay on xbox on the um, xbox marketplace so yeah if you get re or xbox game pass i should say so if you get rare replay you can play perfect dark that way so that's the closest thing you're going to get to to goldeneye they've they it was there was like minor improvements to the gameplay but it's it i don't think it will stack up to to goldeneye in terms of history but it was still good still good yeah so that's it from me hope you enjoyed please leave a comment like subscribe all that kind of stuff i'll be back again for the next tv shows episode which will be on twin peaks i haven't decided what i'm going to do for the next next three film tv and game but be sure to keep in touch by following me on twitter and instagram at pi underscore fogtv where you can keep up to date with what I'm doing so you'll find out when I do decide who knows the next game one might be perfect art who knows we'll see anyway take care stay safe this is Deepi signing out